an extraordinary moment. Each moment in our lives is a threshold moment. But this particular moment is expansive. And it's filled with the alchemy that we've all experienced on this extraordinary retreat together. And the gifts of these remarkable people that have offered into our circle this week. And the support of their partners that join them as well. And so we give you great, great thanks. Heaven is not a place. It's a moment. Mm -hmm. We are in that moment now. Mm -hmm. I celebrate the wonder and the awe of the inner majesty of all of us. And I give thanks to the wonder and joy of stepping through the portal of eternity to take our place in time. Can you speak to your lovely So we've had wonderful encounters this week, accompanied by the miraculous moon, the blood moon, and culminating in ceremony last night with our beloved elders that we were honored and privileged to have join us in sacred ceremony in the culmination through the smoke of both blessing and releasing. And anything that we share here today truly is a gift to all of us. It's not just us standing up here, it's all of us. So we welcome everybody into the sacred portal with, with us. us. On Zoom, Zoom. Thank, thank you for being, being with us. And our most <laughs> beloved brother, Stephen, our dear brother Stephen, <laughs> Reverend Stephen, who was meant to be with us, but the protocols were COVID, was not able to come with his family. Stephen, you're part of the circle. You're standing up here with you and we're honoring your graduation as well. Thank you for being with us, Stephen. Thank you. Oh, wow. Oh, and Reverend Joel, welcome. Welcome, these are two of our all parts reverends, recent reverends, thank you for being with us and all our other most wonderful guests who will be guests who will be sharing with us today. So, to mark this extraordinary, as we've said, moment in, in infinite, in, in infinity. Let's not use the word time. We're in no time now. We'd please like to invite Brother to come up and share water ceremony with us, and perhaps call in the four di five directions. Thank you very much. Boomer. Your sacred name is Opa? Opa. Opa. Yeah, from Santa Fe. Stand next to you so everyone can hear. Okay. 
我为这么我不挖井，到那一步我不挖井，到那后边我也那苦苦，后边我不挖井，到那后面我也那苦苦，后边我不挖井，到那后边我也那苦苦，后边我不挖井，到那后边我也那苦苦，后边我不挖井，
the anointing of the sacred waters. We thank you. You're welcome. We are the light. We are the refraction of the bounty of both Mother Earth and all that inhabits the celestial realms as well. And, and so, so we'd like to invite, invite the audience one by one, starting with you, please, Jane, to light a candle. There's six candles here to represent the light that is you from Mother Candle. And we have a bowl for you to put your match on. Before you light the candle, spend a moment with the flame. So some of you can see 
and uh, feel the trust, the energy that has built in this room. We called it our sanctuary in this beautiful home. The papers behind you represent some of the processes we went through in the deep work that we did together, the sacred work we did together. Um, and this altar, we were all asked to bring a sacred object of meaning with us. And there are just so very many differentiated objects here. The relationship and the way they were placed with each other was done with exquisite attention and intention. And this has been, for many of us, the fulcrum of what we've done together today. And so it, 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 it hosts us. And um, should we all be the living altars in our lives that we carry forward? And we had one of our um, seminarians bring a beautiful project for us to do to make portable altars. And most of the students, I think, have done that. So we are honored and blessed to have very many guests with us today. And Dr. John Cobb, thank you for joining us from Claremont, California. You're one of the advisors of the school and Dr. Cobb, Reverend Dr. Cobb in and of himself is esteemed and known to be the foremost theologian of, he was the 20th century and now John, creeping up to your 100th year, you're not quite there, but now you put in the 21st century, us is still considered to be the foremost theologian of the 21st century, a great supporter of all paths. And we are so very thankful that you've taken the time to be with us. Over to you, John. I'm <clears throat> I'm very grateful that I'm given the opportunity. John, can you hear us? Yes. John, just wait a moment. We need to, we can't hear you, John. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. Now, now can you can hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you for this. Thank you for this opportunity. Is that echo? Is it okay? It sounds strange to me. <laughs> All right. Thank you again for this opportunity to speak to you, to be able to congratulate you. I certainly add my blessing to the blessings you have already been receiving. The um, task of organizing this special institution and of making it operate. And then those of you who have studied here is a great experiment, uh, urgently needed context. We all know that our traditional churches, though they continue to exist and probably will never disappear, are certainly dying and that uh, nothing has really taken its place. And one of the reasons that it's not, they are dying is certainly that they have, even though I think relations among the traditions have been greatly improved, none of, no one of them, even remotely, has all the values that are founded, all of them together. And, what can we do about that? The sad thing is that although the churches are no longer playing a major role in the lives of the great, of the majority of the people of this country and other countries, nothing has taken its place. And the hunger for something is very deep. It turns out that when we simply move to a secular world, the only values that survive are sex and money. And those are very interesting and important values. But the traditions have all known that 
they are not, that is not an adequate life. It is not a meaningful life. It is not a life of serenity. And uh, our educational system has given up its role, in, which it once had in inculcating other kinds of values into students. The, the system of separating facts from values and then leaving values outside of teaching. Of course, we never can do it, but nevertheless, as a goal, is, has had terrible consequences. So the world is hungry for some new direction. So many people can may look to you. One of the problems, of course, is that many people are hungry for some of the values that religions used to provide, but they don't want to disturb their lives in order to get them. In Christianity, we sometimes talk about comforting the afflicted and afflicting the comfortable. People want to be comforted, but the, without some infliction, without some demand, without some requirement, without some radical commitment, conviction that will be costly. The benefits that will have once been derived from the great traditions will not be. So I hope very much that you will lead us in developing new ways of understanding our needs and that you will yourselves find richness of life and joy. Amen and thank you. So we've had some wonderful activities creative activities during our time together. And we dove deep into the well together, right? And out of that well, we, we summoned, we drew down, lifted up whichever direction we wish to reference, some inspirational phrases, and we linked them into some kind of a poem and so this time together, we said, is a gift. And it's a gift to the ordinance, but a gift to all of you too. And so your fellow retreatants have a little presentation of the poem that they co-created for you. Of the poem. Uh, we could say that this is uh, one of the first official all paths hymns. <laughs> this isn't a song, this is a poem. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for our Zoom viewers. Can they see us? Yes, they kind of see us. Kind of see us, but, but we can listen. Can you hear us? So I won't take a long time in introducing this poem, but this was a co-created poem. And I think what we appreciate so much about this particular All Paths community is that the value of co-creation is so lifted up. And it is not about a leader standing above everyone else. It's about all of us standing together and creating the way forward. And so the title of this poem is Holding the Paradox. And I can't think of any other deeper paradox than being both human and divine, being the one who holds both sorrow and joy. Right? And so uh, we'll begin with Kuti. Holding the paradox, the variations on the theme, the ingathering of energies as important as the outpouring of energies. You can't ride side saddle on this paradox. We dance with line and curve and remain open to the wonder of it all. 
splicing the atoms of our interbeing into a myriad of infinite manifestations of uprising thermals of quantum love, effortlessly holding tension with perfect ease. Remember, we cannot measure truth. We can only quantify uncertainty. We don't need to be a hero. We don't need to understand. We're just explosions of explosions that have chosen to sing about ourselves. Rooted in mother, dancing to the rhythm of nature's heartbeat, celestial divine on the other side of knowledge. We are hungry for the divine sustenance from the divine feminine breast. Holding the paradox, thank you for trying. <laughs> <laughs> we wait in silence. And so one of our dear, dear friends um, who wanted to be with us today, um, Quincy Coleman, she has prepared a blessing and a song for our community and for our ordinance. If we can cue that in, please. And so Courtney's an extraordinary musician. Quincy. 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 Hello everybody. I am in the stairwell of my building because it sounds really good in here when I play music. So I'm gonna be offering you guys a song today um, in the spirit of just celebrating your journey, knowing that, this, that it's been a long road getting to where you are right here, right now. And this song that I'm going to share with you is my prayer. It's my prayer for you all to remember knowing that so many things can distract us and there's so much noise out in the world that can take up space in our head and in our hearts. But that after this journey that you've been on and this rite of passage into this next phase of your ministry and your path and your message and your service, you get to draw from all that you have invested in building this connection to source and your heart and your soul. And that it is our job, our responsibility as those who minister to remember. So we will forget because that's part of the human experience, right? And I just continue to ask God every day, help me to remember when I forget. So God bless all of you and thank you for showing up for yourselves, for each other, for humanity and Mother Earth and for me. 
I salute you and I honor your journey from where you've come from, where you are, and where you're going. Namaste. It's a great uh, joy and an honor to ask Imam Jamal to please share your blessing with our students and uh, Jamal has also been so gracious in his support of our school and we thank you for joining us today, Imam. Well, thank you so much. I feel uh, very uh, very honored and very privileged to be in this uh, sacred ceremony. So let me start with a recitation from the Quran, the very first chapter. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a prayer of blessings and 
a prayer to God, O oh God, God of all of humanity, please guide us on the straight path to you. So here's a recitation. Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Arrahmani Rahim. Malik Yomiddin. Ia can a budua ia can a stain. Edinus sirot el mustakimus sirot el lazina amta alehim. Hairil mordubi alehim waladolin. Amin. So, my dear friends, especially to the ordinance, a very, very heartfelt congratulations. Uh, in Arabic, we say, uh, Mabruk or uh, Mubarak. May Baraka, may blessings from those invisible realms descend upon you. And I pray that you continue uh, this critical work of what Islamic mystics call becoming insane kamil, to evolve into the fullness of one's being to become more complete, more perfected. It's a work that needs to be done hourly, daily, uh, throughout our lives. And what is this work? The work of transforming the ego from a commanding master into a personal assistant. Not easy. It requires uh, enduring, compassionate, self-witnessing, vigilance, very inconvenient. The work of purifying the heart. You know, the, the, the mystics say, polish your heart, polish your heart. So it becomes like a polished mirror reflecting the face of Allah. So we become infused with the glow of presence. Again, as I keep on saying, not easy. Uh, Rumi, for example, says, uh, Jamal, if you get irritated by every rub, how will the mirror of your heart ever be polished? But once we do this work, continuously, we can be, as the Quran says, be of authentic service to God's creation. As the mystics say, you can be a lamp, a lifeboat, or a ladder. And again, the the teachers tell us this requires to be blessed with courage. I'll quote the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who said, you know, if you see oppression, cruelty, use your hands, become engaged, do something. If you cannot do that, use your mouth, speak out against injustice. If you cannot do that, yes, of course, pray from your heart. But the Prophet Muhammad said, in this instance, it is the weakest form of faith. The Quran says, in your service, don't forget the animals. The Holy Quran says, animals are communities just like your own. And of course, we know today, the critical work of honoring our planet Prophet Muhammad said, the earth is like your mother. Honor her, protect her. The great mystics say, do you know what is the holiest of holy manuscripts? It is nature. Nature is our greatest teacher. So may your ministry be infused with love. Again, quoting the mystics, love is in every religion, but love has no religion. Infused with compassion, mercy, gentleness. The Prophet Muhammad said, if kindness, if compassion was a thing of the created world, there'd be nothing more beautiful than this. May your ministry be infused with justice, the Quran says, be just, be just. This is closest to God consciousness. As I bring this to an end, 
may you also be blessed with self-care. So you can truly have the capacity to be of service. The Quran says, enjoy the good things of life. Just don't transgress the bounds of what is right. You know, that wonderful 14th century poet Hafiz from Persia says, you know, your greatest regret on your deathbed might be, O oh universe, I did not kiss you enough. So all the mystics tell us again and again, uh, participate in life. If a drop of the wine of vision could rinse your eyes, everywhere you looked, you would weep with wonder. And lastly, may I say, please laugh a lot, laugh. You know, our entire life is rooted in mystery. Who we are, where we come from, where we are going. You know, Rumi says, sell your cleverness and buy bewilderment. And we're encouraged to just engage in laughter. The mystics say, what is laughter? It is a sound of a soul waking up. Again, back to Hafiz who says, may you understand this, that God wants to see more laughter, more playfulness in your eyes, for that is your greatest witness to God. And to bring this to a real close, Ending, I, I want to quote the Prophet Muhammad who said, you know, when you arrived here, everybody was laughing and smiling, but you were crying and weeping. Live such a life, live such a life that when you depart, everybody is, everybody around you is crying and weeping, but you are laughing and smiling. I wish this for your ministry. Amen. We talk of gifts and that was a, a gift extraordinaire. Thank you so much. I'd like to invite um, Sister Ruth, Ruth Boyd Sharon, to offer us a blessing, a prayer. Ruth, thank you for joining us. Good afternoon. This is Ruth Brody Sharon. And I was thinking about Jacob's dream. When he had his dream about the angels ascending and descending, the morning after he woke up and he said, oh, I did not realize I was on holy ground. And so he put a stone there to mark where he had slept and envisioned the angels in heaven. And all of you, everyone who has embarked on this spiritual journey has symbolically put a stone the moment you made the decision to become an interfaith minister, an interfaith guide, an interfaith angel, ascending and descending. And in my tradition in Judaism, when we want to mark a special occasion, we have a blessing which is called the Shehechianu. And I'm going to explain what it means and then I'm going to recite it for you in Hebrew. And the background of the blessing is significant as is the blessing because what it's asking us to do, and I'm going to ask all of you to do this right now, is to look at the face of everybody sitting in the room near you. Make a mental image and, 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 and record it deeply of who you are with, who is next to you, who is in front of you, to the side of you. Because this blessing reminds us that this very moment is unique has never happened before. It will never happen again. And this very moment, especially for those of you who are being ordained today, is a moment that you will recall and rejoice having that moment, being in the fellowship and sistership of the men and women around you right now who are witnessing this special day. 
And the blessing says, we praise you, master of creation, fountain of life, for breathing life into us and for guiding us and for bringing us to this specific moment to celebrate it with all of you. And because it's now going to be recorded in the annals of heaven, in the Akashic records, and also in the minds and souls of everybody who's present here today, that's what makes it special and unique. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, shehechianu, you breathe life into us, v'kiyamanu, and you guided us, v'higianu lazman ha'zeh, we brought, we've been brought to this moment by the Almighty, by the Divine Spirit, and we thank the Almighty. We thank the Divine Spirit for guiding us to be here today. And as a very last note, I sat with Deborah and Andre when all paths unity was just a gleam in their eye. And it has been a distinct pleasure and enormously satisfying to see how this seminary they have created together has grown into a source of life, a center for teaching and guiding. And you know, before someone goes into surgery, there's always a prayer for the hands of the surgeon, not just for the person who is going under the knife. And so my prayer for all of you is that your surgical spiritual hands that now are being ordained this very day, your hands are being ordained, will bring solace and aid and guidance and inspiration and an understanding of the unity of the world and of each one of our parts in creating that unity. So I bless you. I bless you, all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. And Ruth is also one of our faculty, so thank you, Ruth, in Los Angeles. Um, there are a few more blessings I would like to invite now. I'm mindful of time, but I think, Jamshid, you said you had to leave early. I can't hear, we can't hear Jamshid. Hello, everyone. I can stay until about 1 o'clock, 1.15, so... Okay. Thank you so much, Jamshid. And I wanted to ask Reverend Stephen Ross if you care to give a brief blessing, please. Good afternoon to all my friends and my family at All Paths. My heart is with you all today. I call upon the divine source. I call upon the creator, the energies of creation. I call upon the goddess, the great mother to all, to uplift your hearts, to uplift your minds, your thoughts, your words, and your deeds. And may each one of you, each one of us, radiate divine blessings in our ministry, in our lives, in our families, and to this world. May you all be filled with radiance, confidence, and the surety in your hearts that you are on the right path. I wish you all many blessings today and all your days of ministry. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Amen. Thank you, Stephen. And you're in this graduation circle with us, even though you're in Texas, right? Yes, that's right, in Austin, Texas. <laughs> Austin, yeah. 
So we just do have a few more blessings. Um, 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 mindful of time, it's kind of a phrase I've used quite a lot during the retreat, um, because then we've got our actual ordaining ceremony. And so I do have a few more people to invite. If we could just be mindful to to um, harness the message that you have, and let's let's see if we can just be brief, <laughs> divinely brief. <laughs> so I um, we have um, Jamshid. I will invite you now. Well, thank you. I will be mindful of the time, and I know that you need to move on, so I will be very brief and short. Uh, I am really grateful and honored to be here. I entreat the Lord to shower his uh, infinite blessing on you all and confirm you as seekers of justice and truth as you enter the next steps in your journey. And for that, I had been reflected actually on the values and a, stand, a standard of conduct that we have to adhere to, which I wanted to share with you today, perhaps as a, a means of pouring my heart to you and congratulating you in your graduation. These are the words from the Sacred Rising of Baha'u'llah, the founder of the Baha'i faith that I'm going to share with you. And here it goes. Be generous in prosperity and thankful in adversity. Be worthy of the trust of thy neighbor and look upon him with a bright and friendly face. Be a treasure to the poor and admonisher to the rich, an answerer of the cry of the needy, a preserver of the sanctity of thy pledge. Be fair in thy judgment and guarded in thy speech. Be unjust to no man and show all meekness to all men. Be as a lamp unto them that walk in darkness, a joy to the sorrowful, a sea for the thirsty, a haven for the distressed, and an upholder and defender of the victim of oppression. Let integrity and uprightness distinguish all thine acts. Be a home for the stranger, a balm to the suffering, a tower of strength for the fugitive. Be eyes to the blind and a guiding light unto the feet of the erring. Be an ornament to the countenance of truth, a crown to the brow of fidelity, a pillar of temple of righteousness, a breath of life to the body of mankind, an ensign of hosts of justice, a luminary above the horizon of virtue, a dew to the soil of the human heart, an ark on the ocean of knowledge, a sun in the heaven of bounty, a gem on the diadem of wisdom, a shining light in the firmament of thy generation, a fruit upon the tree of humility. God bless you all. Thank you for inviting me to share these few words with you. Invite Sister Laura, if you're there, just a, a brief blessing would be lovely. We invited you to do that. Are you there? Yeah. Okay. Rick Lindsay, are you there? <coughs> Joel, do you have a few words to share with your Rev. Joel? Do you have a few words to share with your your friends sure. or colleagues? Oh, yes. Um, thank you for asking, Rev. Deborah. Um, I just want to share with them that I feel like ordination changes you on a cellular level. Um, it's really quite um, well. You'll know, and you'll be able to tell me about it. Uh, my greatest hope 
is that you will all go forward from today and engage your faith and your spiritual foundation in ways that not only enhance those whose lives you touch, but in ways that also bring you great joy and deep gratitude. May you be at peace. May your heart remain open and may you gently open the hearts of others. May you awaken to the light of your own true nature and may you help others awaken to theirs. May you be healed and may you be a source of healing for all beings. That is my deepest hope and prayer for all of you. Thank you. And Dr. Richard Rose, thank you for being with us. Certainly, and my prayer, my blessing comes in the form of a prayer and it is truly an honor to be with all of you on this day. Let us pray. Dear most high God, oh God, you who have been our dwelling place in all generations. We come to you with humility and acknowledge your presence in this space. We ask your blessings upon these ordinance and that this is a rite of passage. Ordination is a sacred rite into a life of service to a higher calling. And so we ask that you, O oh God, empower these graduates to apply what they have learned that is of value and share it with their communities and the world. We ask that you will continue to bless this service. We ask that by the order of your spirit, each individual participating in this service be inspired by the words of wisdom and encouragement. And we ask that those words become living in each of us. All these things we ask in the name of love, mercy, and peace. God bless and God bless each of you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Rose. <coughs> Dr. Reverend Rose. Reverend Dr. Rose. <laughs> Thank you. So we'll move on. And so as we transition now towards the actual ceremony of your ordination, we do have one more blessing. We'd love to ask you to in person bestow your blessing on the graduates. Oh, could we? Laura, do you have a brief message? We called on you earlier. We can't hear you, Laura. That's Laura Abe Tessamale. She was also ordained all parts in our first public ordination back in Salt Lake City, World Parliament of Religions, and a dear sister and friend. Thank you, can you hear me? All right, warm greetings of Aloha Talofa, beloved family. Thank you, Deborah and Andre, for the invitation to be able to share a blessing. Um, I'm very grateful to have been there when for, uh, All Paths Divinity School first began and Deborah had announced, what do you think about this name, All Paths Divinity School? And I said, it's amazing, it's perfect. To see the work that has unfolded through the sheer love and dedication of Deborah and Andre has just been inspiring. Um, and to have been an honorary um, ordained minister through this beautiful organization at the Global Parliament of the World's Religions in Salt Lake City, Utah in 2015 with many others was a true blessing. And so today I am humbled to share with you a, a brief blessing. Oh, gracious and loving creator, divine mother and father as one, Leatua, Keakua, they are known in my beautiful Pacific Islands of Hawaii and Samoa. O oh, almighty creator, in perfect assurance of your presence here today, we pray your fulfillment of these blessings upon these new ministers being ordained to serve you and our global family and our beloved mother earth. These are who have been called your sons and daughters from among them to assure and assume the office of interfaith leader, minister, pastor, preacher, and servant leaders. Oh God, we pray that you will bless them 
in all their with all their duties that they may daily incarnate your love and mercy with those they will be called to serve never failing in their commitments never despairing of the ultimate coming of your kingdom heaven on earth may it begin within and manifest it forward all around may they never doubt the sincere desire of the people to be brought closer to god through all the ways of unconditional love and compassion. Let these new ministers begin and end every day with you, dear God, renewing his or her faith and repairing it where it is weak, praying into the mysteries of life and death, where he, she may be called upon to celebrate and to endure with his or her people, her ministry committee, fearlessly examining consciousness for sins of omission, sins of commission or omission, and resolving cheerfully to make reparation where it is needed, searching his and her soul for sources of integrity and steadfast faith, turning over his, her weariness to you, dear creator, Re relinquishing his or her failures to your mercy and refreshing the vows that he and she makes here today may they be able to devote their breath of life daily to honoring and glorifying you dear creator these are our humble prayers and favors we ask upon each and every one of these ministers being ordained may they go forth and bless our global family infinitely as they will too be blessed aloha aloha amen upon our Lord Jesus Christ, our Holy Mother Mary, St. Michael the Archangel, the Archangels and the Legions of Angels of Light. I call upon St. Expedite and Padre Pio. I call upon Mary Magdalene, the great goddess Isis, the great goddess Kuan Yin, the great goddess Tara, all of the essence of the divine feminine energies, our Holy Father and the creator of love and light. I call upon all of your guides and ancestors of light and ours, all of ours here. I call upon the mountain ranges, the Sangre de Christos, the Pecos wilderness, the Romesa. I call upon the Galisteo Basin area. I call upon the Manzano Mountains. I call upon the Sandia Mountains. I call upon the Hamas Mountains and all of the ranges around us. I call upon the waters, the fire, the earth, and the air, and I call upon all of those who you consider holy 
to be above us and below us, in front of us and behind us, to the left of us and the right of us, enveloping each of us and all of us, and saturating us on every level at all times, blessing us with graces, love and light and joy, peace, safety, and protection for all of us and all of the people we love and for all of the people on this planet. May your journey be blessed with bliss.
thinking with all these extraordinary blessings and the potency and the richness of it, I was just thinking how saturated we are all most likely feeling and you mentioned that sacred saturation. And so now as we transition to this part of our ceremony together, I want to invite Rev Shana, Rev um, Stephanie, to do a purification uh, moment here with our bowl of water. Let me add, we've had this exquisite crystal in the bowl of water and um, these beautiful offerings from the matches. So we've got the earth, we've got the water, we've got fire, we've got air, we've got it all right here. And so Rev Steph, Rev Shana, medicine man is so beautiful and we will offer awesome. we will offer uh, another cleansing because we can't have two <laughs> and we are we have here in this bowl like it was not planned everything happens for a reason we have water we have the extinguished fire we are standing on holy ground and we're breathing holy air and what could be better? So we'll start with you, Sarah. Uh, I cannot hold on to this stuff, can I? What I'm going to be doing, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be pouring hand, uh, water over the hands of each of the ordinands, and I'll pour it with your hands cupped open, and then they'll turn them over I'll pour it with your hands for paper. And while I do that, you can just see for yourself. Um, okay. Let me just My stool for putting it in.
for what happened is during this little ritual. What happened during this ritual was that each of our ordinands gave away something that they don't want, really truly said goodbye to something they don't want to take with them into their ministry. And hopefully it will be an enlightening and open future without whatever that is, whatever that is. when our ordinance get the opportunity to make their declarations of intention of their ministries and they'll be called out one by one with the mic to stand in front here and make your declaration and go back to your seat. friends and family and loved ones watching at home. I will be shockingly brief, which for those of you who know me is a miracle that is occurring on this day in and of itself. I stand before you authentically human and divinely appointed. And I vow to continue to allow my heart to be broken, open, over and over until it stays open and all the love that I have flows forward and I can receive all of the love that there is to receive. I vow to walk my path, bending towards the light with all the integrity and intention that I have. I vow to see people as they are, meet them where they are, love, honor, and respect them as they are. And in the words of His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama, may I be come at all times, both now and forever, a protector for those without protection, a guide for those who have lost their way, a ship for those who with oceans to cross, a bridge for those with rivers to cross, a sanctuary for those in danger, a lamp for those without light, a place of refuge for those who lack shelter, and a servant to all in need. I know 
adventure. Dear friends and honored guests, both present and gathered from around the world, thank you for being here. <laughs> Saint Teresa of Avila, one of the great mystics from the Christian tradition, once said, quote, the beloved God only asks two things of us, that we love her and that we love each other. This is the sum of what we should strive for. Oh, friends, if you could understand how vital love really is to all of us, we would make it the whole of our study. Well, there have been many things that I have learned and studied during my time at All Paths. On this day, I am reminded that the greatest lesson I have learned from all of you is love. And so my vow this day for myself and for this community and for the sake of the whole world is that I will strive each day to love God with my whole heart and soul and mind and strength, and I will love my neighbor as, it, as myself. May it be so. And it is so. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So now, I anoint you in the name of the mother. May you go forth, filled with the strength and power of your centered self, of your rooted trueness, of your joyous and mischievous laughter. I bless you as an ordained interface. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> so moving forward, my invitation and 
intention is simply to hold space for the sacred emergence and spiritual journey of others with one another, rooted in ritual, nature, deep listening, and radical love. Our current emphasis is on the healing, equipping, and empowering of women, of the marginalized, and the significant power of divine feminine wisdom and energy. Bless you, the expansion of your presence, of your yielded heart, of your surrendered body in service. actually haven't been terribly brief, um, but I, I worked hard for this moment, so I'm going to take it. <laughs> when I was going through my dark night of the soul a few years ago, two questions turned over in my head repeatedly and haunted me. Who could I have been if I had had the family I always needed? Who could I have been if I had had what a child needs to thrive? And now, thanks to all paths, I found out. The foundation of my ministry is that there's no greater tragedy than the spark of a purely divine soul in the vehicle of an adult body being driven and controlled by a wounded child. Mm -hmm. The world is in peril. This is because we have wounded children and adult bodies steering the ship of the collective. The screams of terror of these wounded children and adult bodies is so loud, the calm, steady voice of their divine souls cannot be heard. The only way to correct our course as a collective is to mature emotionally. The only way to mature emotionally is to be fiercely loved and guided by those mature mentors who have walked the fiery, initiatory paths of process towards their own maturation. Those mentors who can rain such compassion and understanding down that the grounds of the adult body become fertile soil for the sprouting and blossoming of the soul. All past has done this for me. Under their care, guidance, and grace, I've matured and grown up emotionally before my very eyes. This is a gift I will spend my life paying forward. Audre Lorde said, the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. And so too do we know that the domination and degradation the patriarchy enacts will never be dismantled by more domination and degradation. The patriarchy isn't merely an imbalance of masculine forces, it's the immature masculine wounded child steering the ship of the collective. This scared little immature masculine child is thrashing and flailing in fear. A fear quelled only by controlling others and by taking what feels too scary to vulnerably ask for. 
What a thrashing and flailing scared child needs is both containment of the rogue energy and compassion for the terror that would cause such behavior to feel necessary. Compassion and containment are the balance of the mature feminine and the mature masculine. Both needed equally. Both needed equally to give the firm but warm love every child needs to mature. I promise today to take my firm but warm love out into the world. I promise to rain it down like a storm on all the parched lands of the immature masculine and the immature feminine. I vow to love the collective into the emotional adults I know that we can be. the emotional adults we need in order to change the world. I promise to love the immature masculine into the mature masculine from the lover to the warrior and every expression in between. I promise to love the immature feminine into the mature feminine from the holy destroyer to the compassionate mother and every expression in between. My heart is a fountain. Dear God, let them drink. Mm. Glory be to the mature masculine, the mature feminine, and the holy child, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. I'm not done yet, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 have, I want to finish with gratitude. Um, thank you to the land, spirit, and people of New Mexico, mm -hmm. who transformed me long before today. Thanks to Rev. Deborah and Andre for creating the most magical family a person could ask for. Thank you to Rev. Steph for sharing her healing and wisdom so generously. Thanks to Rev. Ailey for sharing his creativity and inspiration also so generously. Extra special thank you to Rev. Shana, my faculty mentor, who truly went above and beyond to make sure I could be here today. Thank you to two of my best friends, one sitting right here, Stacy, and one watching from home, Lindsay, who will forever be my chosen family, and who were probably the first two people to love me for who I am instead of what I could do for them. Thank you to my ancestors for choosing me to be the one to get us free, and for supporting me along the way. I can feel how proud of me you are. May I see myself through your eyes for the rest of my life. To my fellow ordinands and also my, all my classmates, I fall into fits of despair often enough about the state of the world and when I do, I just remember that leaders like you are being initiated into it, and I just am filled up with hope all over again. I love you. 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 Thank you. That is actually it. <laughs>
So I'm going to speak words physically that are being spoken across the veil. Before we became lovers, we became friends. As friends, we committed to serve in the work. Now, standing in the threshold, we once again affirm the commitment to serve in the light. for me as a visible emblem of the light that shatters darkness mm -hmm. about me. I stand in the fullness of your cosmic awareness, knowing the wellness of the infinite awareness, knowing that you're dancing in the dark. leading those to their own return. So be a blessing to us all. May your walking this earth leave petals in your back. Broken heart <coughs> is an open heart, and such is mine. 
I stand here in the presence and in this present moment full of gratitude for the wellspring of my heart, the spring of tears, the healing waters of love. And may my love nourish and nurture all beings, all beings, all. you with the blessing of no questions yes. left. Mm -hmm. I welcome you into the assurance of blessed uncertainty. Mm -hmm. and may your walk be strong and bright and filled with love. Yes. May you know friendship and companionship of your fellows surrounding you all the time. Welcome. As I call your names, here are your official certificates, which reads, Be it known that the clergy and administration of All Paths Universal Temple have selected, appointed, and ordained the bearer of this certificate for the interfaith, interspiritual ministry with authority to perform all sacerdotal rites. Ordained Interfaith Interspiritual Minister, Reverend Jenny Yonby. As an all paths pioneer, you are truly a blessing. Jenny. Reverend Trina. Reverend Eric. <laughs> Reverend Sarah. Sarah Hurley. Okay. <laughs> 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 Reverend Sarah Cassidy. <laughs> and Reverend Samuel. Schwoel <laughs> 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 Feldman. Okay. You may all sit. Um, and we now invite one of our newly ordained reverends. Reverend Trina Riley has been asked to share a few words on behalf of our fellow Virginians. religious traditions and cultures, ordinary, excuse me, ordination carries a general meaning or understanding around a response to an internal invitation for spiritual service. In many cultures, 
It carries the weight and connotations of separateness, holiness, hierarchy. But today, this is not so. Today, this ordination centers around the significance of acknowledging and honoring and celebrating our oneness. We are committing, first and foremost, to an ongoing process, an ongoing journey of unraveling into love. And one of our, um, an author, Gloria Kropinski, who wrote one of the very first books we were asked to read in our program, captures this and this affirmation I would like to read that we have carried and will carry with us. We awaken and remember that we are. One with the mother, one with the father, one with all that is. In faith, we affirm this truth as we live in both the mystery and the manifest. Divine purpose infuses our will and supplies all the power we need to fulfill our place in the plan. Unconditional love for all sentient beings flows through us into the world. And we know these truths through our feelings and the wisdom of our bodies. Through the legacy of knowledge preserved and passed on to us, and the perennial wisdoms and through the grace of inner revelation. We have developed the powers of discernment that enable us to perceive accurately the real from the unreal. And we are made in the image of the divine and are therefore creating realities in our bodies, our emotions, our minds, and our spirit. We take full responsibility for all that we create through the eternal rhythms and expressions of yin and yang, and we bring balance between heaven and earth, the inner and the outer. Through the alchemy of truth and love, we are transforming all of the fears, all of the mistakes, misperceptions, and limitations of the past. We are enduring all that is necessary to live the highest truths of our beingness. And for this remembrance and for the privilege of serving, we give thanks and so be it. And in that spirit, I would like to offer all of us this blessing. May we light the world with the fire of essence wildly imperfect vessels of radical love, tending tenderly to the secret gardens within as deep calls to deep, seeing into being. Deep listening in the solace of silence where we breathe, remember, as we awaken to our oneness. Rooted in the nature of mother healing us into our wholeness, co-creation grand invitation through infinite cycles of life, death, and rebirth. Midwives holding space for the emergence of souls to become fully human, wildly self, never alone, but one light, a call for the sacred ordinary work of unraveling into love. And the last blessing so we have several graduates, two of whom are here. So if I could please invite Rev and Rev, <laughs> both come here. And I would like to acknowledge also our recent graduate over there, Stephen, Rev Stephen. 
and also Rene Kaufman, who wasn't able to join us today, is also officially graduating from the school. So here you now get your Master of Divinity Interfaith into Spiritual Studies is now being awarded to Reverend Jenny Ovi. Here you go. Thank you. This Master of Divinity in Interspiritual or Interfaith, I would say Interfeeling, is awarded to Reverend Eric Kowalczyk. certificates to hand out. To Rev to be Joanna Bell, <laughs> a certificate of deep appreciation for your essential presence. Yes. 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 To Rev to be Courtney Lefitte. The same message, your essential presence. <laughs> to Rev to be Cara Foritier. <laughs> and to Rev to be Shmuel Shmuel. <laughs> Now, before we end, we are going to invite Reverend Eric Kowalczyk to share a message for the whole community. So I was asked to share a couple of brief words about the program in the school. Um, and since I was so short before, and I'm, we're at the end now, I'm going to take a really, really long time. <laughs> I come from a, a really unique background, deeply entrenched in the patriarchy, deeply entrenched in maintaining the status quo. And a lot of people in my life are still in that, uh, in that profession and said to me, what do you mean you're going to be an interfaith minister? What does that even mean? What is the school that you're going to? I just got my Master's in Divinity and I struggled to answer that question because how do you describe a place that is a home that you didn't know that you were missing and a family that you didn't know that you were longing for? How do you describe a program that challenges you, breaks you, causes you to evaluate every single aspect of every fiber of your being? Think that you have the answer only to be knocked back on your rear once again as you work through the program over and over. How do you explain knowing people so intimately yet seeing them only in a tiny little Zoom <laughs> square for two years of their life? How do you explain writing more than 400 papers and reading well over 100 books to get to this point? How do you describe deep, intense spiritual counseling sessions and Tuesday night calls where we delve into the sublime and the hysterical and everything in between. How do you include a Wednesday session where we gather to talk about the very fundamental nature of the divine itself as manifested through our own realities? How do you encompass all of that into a 30 second elevator speech? <laughs> this is the pathway forward. It is a container carefully curated by two of the most genuine and authentic, loving human beings that have ever walked the face of the planet to carve the path forward for the next generation and summon to a website is this incredible group of people here and behind us and on the screen that have charted the way before us. So how do you answer that question? All Paths Divinity School is the pathway home. Thank you. <laughs> you all have a treat and so to culminate this event maybe we invite your 
retreatant friends who have actually created from nothing, which is full of everything, this offering to you. Yeah, here's a mic. Both of them. One wasn't free. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Um, yeah, it just wasn't on. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, everyone at home. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone at home. This song was born yesterday in a session that we got to do with Ailey, with Rev Ailey. It was an amazing experience of co-creation where words that came from all different places for many different reasons that we all brought, that words that belonged in other sentences, words that belonged in other contexts, we put them together. Then we just sat and looked at the periphery and this is what we came up with as a homage to the time we spent here and the excitement that we have around being a part of this ordination process with you this week. Oh, 
for bringing such meaning with your presence here today. Can I have I'm going to stand over here so I can see each of you and say my own personal blessing, which is a Hebrew word, one word. It sometimes said Aliyah, and it sometimes said Aliyah, and it means to rise. And that is the blessing that I want to impart to you. So have a wonderful Aliyah, or Aliyah. <laughs> so this is a poem that was written by my daughter-in-law, Ahia Kaplan, Ahia Kaplan Lester, and it was written especially for the ordinance of APBS. It's never been read anyplace else. It was read at the last uh, ordination. And now it's for you, for all of you. <sighs> she is a performance artist. I'll do my best. <laughs> to be a spiritual leader is to be a ladder. Why don't you sit this one? <laughs> <laughs> it's called to be a spiritual leader. To be a spiritual leader is to be a ladder, to climb and yet to root, to court the heights and yet to cake the boots with the earthly truth of mind and drudge. No matter, it is just dark matter from which we are all made. Some come, some come, so come get messy in this earthly maze where every mess is messianic. <laughs> and the mission is to be a mansion made of brick and mortar and yet to know the immortal order that daily forms your base. From basement to spine, to higher spire, your job is to inspire, to lower, to love the higher. And you, lucky you, you get to be the ritualist that bridges the distances, that webs them both in a holy matrimony of paradoxal grace. Be the quiet vine that climbs to the heights, with roots entwined in the depths. Become adept at spanning that massive stretch with the long, steady march of your breath. And yet, though you be an ambassador of spirit, do not give in to the sin of spiritual escapism, but rather befriend each wretched inch of this embodiment to confer compassion upon the broken, to listen more than to preach, to reach inward when outer walls are breached, to be a docent of the insides, to sing eulogies for truth and trees and innocence, to weave in the ancient wisdom with the latest science, to speak up for the value of silence to teach the world the spiritual technology of how to see the unseen, how to sanctify, how to dream. Your task, to be, to be a diplomat. 
of higher truth in a world wired to be wildly confused. Yes, insist upon ascension, but do not resist the, the dungeons. Become accustomed to praying with your feet. Seek reconciliation, preach autonomy, be a contradiction, heal with wisdom, be a ladder full of reach. I'll leave it at that, okay? And from that holy ground, take off your shoes and walk around. Dear spiritual leaders, newly anointed, from that ladder, may you preach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So the ordinance bees bring out golden boxes and your silk purses. So if you could open up your silk purses, this one little gift. So the heart's grown. We did little hearts in our earlier sessions. Mm. It's your heart's growing. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's uh, rose quartz and for, for your arms. And at the same time, if you could open up your golden boxes, and let me preface by saying that we are all, I think I might have said it in the beginning, we're fractions of light. And so please open your box and hold up. There's a little loop at the top. And if you, Jim, if you could get a picture of this. And just hold it up. Mm -hmm. oh. Ooh. And so these are all little light catches or wind chimes. So I'll give it to you. And these will obviously catch the light and be the rainbows. Mm -hmm. If we could all just form a circle and rest it for play us up. In, out, up, down. <laughs> grateful thanks for everything that has transpired here this day, for these beloved ordinands stepping across the, th the sacred threshold. We give thanks for Reverend Deborah and Andre for holding the space, for being the beloveds, guiding the beloveds. We give thanks for Reverend Shana and a Amy and all of the other students who have participated in this sacred event. So I bless these dear ordinands who have boldly stepped up this day. I know that each one has a ministry and it's already written upon their soul. It's already written in all the cells of their being. And those ministries are now birthing and going forth and blessing the world in myriad ways that we can never even predict or imagine. And I bless all the, those gathered here, the family and the friends and those who are participating on Zoom I know that the world has changed. It is actually rocked on its axis as a result of us being here together this day to celebrate life and love and truth. I give my grateful thanks and let it be, and so it is. Amen.